Mechanism of prostate cancer progression and metastasis in the bones uh, can be many. We know that bone provides the microenvironment, which is unique compared to other cancers, maybe similar to prostate and breast cancer, but different from other uh, uh, cancers. So the bone microenvironment definitely plays a role in the progression of prostate cancer and breast cancer in the bones. Beyond that, I think it's very difficult to pinpoint a single pathway which is responsible. Visceral disease um, tends to behave more aggressively and uh, has frequently a neuroendocrine component that needs to be treated typically with chemotherapy. The other differences between visceral and bone disease is that visceral disease can exist and can be progressing even though the PSA is very low. I mean, sometimes the PSA may be 0.1, but the visceral disease, there are liver meds that are clearly progressing. So I think uh, for bone disease, most of the time the PSA is a good indicator at least of telling you of disease progression, but not always. Frequently, you would have to look at other components like alkaline phosphatase, anemia, as well as clearly the patient's symptomatology plays a large role in determining uh, whether there is disease progression or not. Bone microenvironment plays a critical role in metastatic uh, prostate cancer. Uh, prostate cancer tends to have a propensity to metastasize to the bone, and the exact reasons for that are currently unknown. There are a number of enzymes that have been uh, sort of uh, reported to be involved, but the exact mechanism has not been uh, deciphered. The way that uh, bone microenvironment does play a big role though is that we know that some of the enzymes that produce testosterone, CYP17-alpha for instance, is overexpressed as the uh, patient gets castrate resistant uh, disease. So that is one uh, impact that the stroma has had where we've been able to develop targets to sort of attack the CYP17 enzyme and be able to uh, stop the testosterone production at the stroma level. So even though serum testosterone is suppressed with androgen deprivation therapy, what we were found is that there is a discordance and the tissue testosterone levels are actually going higher as the patient becomes castrate resistant. So that interplay between the stroma and osteoclasts and osteoblasts has played a tremendous role in developing some of the very effective treatments for metastatic CRPC. In addition, bone targeted therapy is uh, becoming a critical part of uh, the prostate cancer therapy, not necessarily because it will improve survival, which it, studies show that it doesn't have an impact on survival, but because it will uh, enhance the health of the patient and sort of delay or prevent bone fractures and things that could play a major role in impacting the morbidity and occasionally mortality in these patients. Metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer has a number of symptoms that it can present with. I think because it has a propensity to have bone metastases, the typical and most common symptom that springs to mind is bone pain. But clearly, there are a number of other symptoms that are involved in this disease and that are contributing to tremendous morbidity and mortality in these patients. One of the things that I would state is that there is a huge constitutional component of fatigue and anemia, even fatigue without anemia, loss of appetite, generally feeling run down. Those are symptoms that typically no scan is gonna capture, no blood test is gonna capture, and only seeing the patient, getting a detailed history is what will allow the clinician to sort of capture those symptoms and try to correct them because clearly they play a large role in the patient's uh, feeling of well-being and uh, overall performance status.
The most common cause of morbidity and mortality in prostate cancer patients with metastatic disease is, are, is bone pathology. So bone fractures, bone pain, are, they remain the most common cause of suffering in these patients. And hence, the diagnosis of bone metastasis early on is important. So when we see PSA rising, when somebody is being treated with androgen deprivation therapy or other therapies for castration sensitive disease, I think it's very important to do bone scans in a timely fashion to detect the bone metastasis. And if uh, metastasis is present, it is very important to treat patients with bone targeted therapies in a timely fashion.